satellite exploded, a poem is heading to Jupiter's moon, and Starlink is fighting to come to India and the U.S. Navy. So let's get into it. There was an anomaly this month that caused an internet outage in parts of Europe, Africa, and Asia. Turns out the anomaly was a Boeing Intelsat satellite exploding. According to statements from Intelsat, it is unlikely the satellite will be recoverable. Probably because it blew into at least 20 different pieces that are being tracked by radar. No one knows, or is saying, what happened. Now look, it is fun to bash Boeing, but it was a nine-year-old satellite. So my bet, I think it got hit by a meteorite. But I guess we'll see. In more positive space news, the Europa Clipper probe launched on October 14th, and it is going to travel the 1.8 billion miles to Jupiter's moon Europa, where it will pass by 49 times searching for life. It arrives in 2030. Europa is the moon that is covered in a thick layer of ice with a watery liquid ocean on the inside, which potentially could harbor life. According to the New York Times, the probe is carrying a poem by U.S. Poet Laureate Ada Limon engraved on interior panel. Limon's poem, in praise of mysteries, part of a project blending art and science, symbolizing humanity's curiosity and connection to space. So here's the funny thing about this mission. I know a bunch of astronomers, and they have been talking about getting a mission to Europa for decades. Decades! People who study stars are talking about the importance of getting a probe to Europa to check out that water. Why would they care? Because in 1984, the movie 2010 came out. And in the movie 2010, humanity first encounters alien life as chlorophyll detected underneath the ice of Europa, but it quickly swims away and they're forced to leave before they find out what it was. So all those Gen X kids that watched the movie are now 50-something and 60-something head of departments and tenured astronomy professors, and they still want to know what's under that ice. And that is why they've been pushing for this mission. True story. Now, before we get into some big news about Starlink, here's a word from our sponsor. Thanks, Alex. I'm Brian from Speedify, and Speedify is an app for all platforms that's designed from the ground up to be the best mobile VPN. So it's secure, and it lets you combine all of your internet connections. Cellular, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, even the cellular connections of devices near you. It's available for phones, computers, and even routers. You can download it from our website, the App Store, or the Play Store. So download it today. Thanks, Brian. Elon Musk is battling Mukesh Ambani to bring satellite internet to India. Mukesh Ambani, of course, is the billionaire chairman of Reliance Geo, a huge telecom in India. He is one of the wealthiest men in the world. It is a very large potential market. India has 1.4 billion people and not enough of them have internet. Running fiber to all of those households would be very, very expensive. There's a lot of rural India. But beaming it down from space might be much, much more economical. So according to the BBC, India's government plans to allocate satellite spectrum administratively, a decision that Musk supports but Ambani is against. So here's the trick. Reliance Geo has partnered with Astra's MEO satellites, mid-Earth orbit, while Musk's Starlink operates with LEO, low-Earth orbit satellites. And Musk satellites really exist. So what Ambani is doing is he's purposely trying to get the rules changed in the middle of the game in order to slow down Musk. Because Musk has satellites. If he has permission to use some spectrum, he can be up and running really, really fast. So... By trying to add an auction into this, he'll slow it down. He'll add expenses for Musk. He'll add more opportunities for himself to, like, buy up all the spectrum. And then nobody can use it until he gets a chance to use it. So in this case, it turns out Starlink is the one the right. The Indian government is doing things correctly. They need to hold the course and not change the rules now. The U.S. Navy is testing Starlink's internet service on warships to provide fast, reliable connectivity under the C2, that's S-E-A-2 initiative. According to Wired, C2's new system offers speeds up to 1 gigabit per second, a huge upgrade over the older satellite internet services they were using. Now, of course, there are concerns that Elon Musk controls the network and makes decisions on the snap. For example, when he declined Ukraine's request for access in a military operation, though I think he was right about that. 
controversial opinion I'll get back to. But other military forces like U.S. Space Force and Army are using Starlink and other satellite services for their advanced capabilities. So Starlink has some real advantages, but it has some vulnerabilities, right? A lot of people are concerned, how secure is this thing really to hackers? There's the fact that Musk has unilateral control over it. And is it safe enough, therefore, because both these, to be used with real important classified or critical military systems? So far, the plan is that it's going to be used for sailors for, you know, morale-boosting internet access. Let them watch the Super Bowl. Let them uh, email their kids. And for standard, though classified, paperwork like human resources and payroll. Now, Starlink has to walk a really fine line here. Obviously, there is a lot of money in providing internet access to navies of the world. But they cannot allow themselves to be seen as a system used for weapon systems or battle communications, or they will become a target. Starlink dishes on hospitals will become excuses for militaries to bomb the hospital, saying clearly they had a military communication system on the roof. Starlinks are used to guide drone weapons. You know, we, we were hitting the gorillas when we hit the hospital. You can't let that happen. Also, it is much, much easier to shoot down a satellite than it is to put a satellite up there. In case of war, Musk does not want the first action to be everyone shoot down all the satellites, because they could. This is dangerous stuff, and he has to be careful. Subscribe for more connectivity tech news like this.